Pets can bring us a lot of love and joy into our life, but there's a risk too. We're here today to help you help your kids deal with the loss of a pet. I think we have to start with the obvious thing, and that is that nobody gets out of this alive. <laughs> Not even our pets. And you know what? We can, we can joke about that a little bit. We can have some fun with that idea, but it's a hard thing when it happens. And Vicki, you and I have had to say goodbye to some pets mm -hmm. before. And you know what? I'm kind of a sap. Vicki knows this about <laughs> me. Um, our first dog, Crystal was with us for 14, 14 and, and a half, half years. years. Mm -hmm. She raised our kids. Yeah. This is that sweet soul that our kids would go to when they couldn't talk to us, they couldn't talk to anybody else, but they would go to Crystal uh -huh. and yes. pour out their little hearts. And she was just so sweet. And when a loss like that happens, it is significant. It's very, very real for them. And it we is. need to let that happen as if it's up to us, well, right? Yeah, I know. To let it happen. I mean, it's going to happen. When you invite a pet into your home, you're setting yourself up for this. Yeah. Okay. You can avoid the pain if you avoid the pet. Right. Right. Exactly. But there's some huge downsides to that. We'll acknowledge then that death happens. And I've got a, a friend who's an undertaker. I thought that was an old that's, West term yeah. or something. I just think it's weird that he has a friend. That's, that's <laughs> well, I have a lot of interesting <laughs> friends. He's an undertaker, a funeral director. Right, right. And he said to me something that has always stuck with me. He said, Paul, talking about death won't kill you. <laughs> okay, good to know because we're hesitant sometimes to even talk about it. Guess what? Your kids starting at about age five, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, are going to come to terms with mortality. Mm -hmm. They're going to pick up on it either through the media. It's going to happen. They know. So we don't deny to our kids that it's going to happen. We acknowledge that mm -hmm. it will. And that brings about the whole idea. It's, it's we really want to avoid making promises we can't keep. You can't, you cannot promise that nothing will ever happen to Rover. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not in your control and it's not true. So what if your child says, well, what if Rover dies? Then you talk about what if. We'll, we'll be, really be really sad. Really sad. Mm -hmm. Wait, can we say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, we can, because guess how you're going to feel when Rover dies? You're going to feel sad. Let's not deny those feelings. We have to create some space for those feelings to happen. Now that leads to the second tip, because it's an acknowledgement of where the pain comes from. Let's help our children to see the connection between the love and the relationship that we have with our pet and the pain and loss that we feel at their passing. You don't get to feel the pain and the loss unless you have the love and the relationship. Right. It's what sets you up mm -hmm. for it. So we acknowledge it. And in doing so, what if we could help our kids also to understand that they're not wrong about how they're feeling. They're exactly. They're feeling that because of the love that they had. Think about for yourself. Would you give up an entire relationship just to avoid the pain when that relationship comes to an end? Have you ever attended a funeral? And do you ever think at that funeral, oh, I wish I never would have known that person? Or can you just allow yourself to feel the pain? So we're going to help our kids to do the same thing and draw that connection for them. Mm -hmm. The reason, sweetie, that you're feeling this is because of the love that's in your oh, heart. Good times that you had together. Right. You know, this reminds me, when we lost our dog, Crystal, uh, one of our sons was living overseas at the time. And we talked, you know, the first one is go ahead mm -hmm. and talk about death. He, we had some discussions knowing that probably our sweet dog wouldn't be there when he came home. So he knew. Yeah. Um, and so in preparation for it, he said, Mom, when it happens, we just write on the outside of the letter, this is a hard letter. I'll know what the letter has. And that way I can have time to process it and be ready before I open it and receive the news. And I think that's perfectly fine. Let's give them, give our children the space to feel whatever they're going to feel in that loss. 
and talk about it. Now that brings up another important point, Vicki, because we can create intentionally some space for that kind of a feeling. Mm -hmm. As a parent, when your child suffers a significant loss like this, treat it as if your best friend just lost their parent. Right. Now this is tr tricky. I remember, I don't even know, do you know what was squishy? There, One of our sons oh, brought yeah. home something from science It was class. a little shellfish kind it, of a he thing. He called it squishy. I don't even know what it was. Right. But it was important to him right. and when it passed, Paul was so good. He handled it really well. It gave him time and, and they talked about it. Is there anything he wanted to say? And, and then they buried it. But, you know, it would be really easy. That's one of those ones that have been really easy to just kind of flush away. <laughs> well, yeah. And you know what, Vicki? I almost did. Uh -huh. Because my, my inclination was, oh, that thing it died just... and it's stinky. Let's just toss it out. Well, he was kind of attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that, that we were able to identify that soon enough to not make the mistake <laughs> of just flushing it or trying to slip it through, you know, without him noticing, they're going to notice. Yeah. You see these sitcoms all the time where people are trying to replace, <laughs> replace. the pet, you know, <laughs> pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> and that never goes well. Just watch any sitcom. Really? I mean, watch the sitcoms and realize that your kids are smarter than that. Yeah. So we're going to create some space. Now, what that might mean is that you get to take a little time off work or whatever else it is that you're doing or to- say we're gonna carve out front, right after dinner, we're gonna carve out this time. To do what? What if you hold a funeral? <laughs> Some people it doesn't even occur to them, let's have a funeral for our pet. Why wouldn't you? Follow your gut on that. You have an instinct that maybe something needs to happen. Yes, formalize it. Create an event, an experience there. Now the best funerals, have some laughter, have you noticed? And, and some, some tears. tears. Mm -hmm. Make room for both of those. And it's really healthy for the kids if you can encourage them to talk about funny things they remember from that pet. And you'll have some. In fact, you might have some videos up on YouTube of your pet doing some goofy stuff. Right. And if you don't, then there's others you can find here. Um, but I love we go back to the place that you, you provide a space for them to do that, uh, yes. an intentional space. And and we've had, I remember when a, a pet parakeet passed away, uh, Paul helped my daughter, you know, get ready and, and had a little uh, box, I think, and mm -hmm. basically a little space. And he offered her, is there something you want to say about the, do the, the bird? Mm -hmm. And I don't think she did at the time. I think she didn't really know what she wanted to say. And so we didn't force it. Don't force it. But we allowed yeah. that space. He shared some things. I shared some things. And giving them that time and that space is really important. Uh, Vicki mentioned the box. Okay. Now we're getting into some detail here, but maybe this will be helpful to you. It's a curative or healthy or healing thing for someone to assist in the preparations for retiring that little pet. We do this as humans too. We get involved in different ways in funeral rites and passages and allowing your child to participate as much or as little as they like. So keeping it in, in choice. Sweetie, do you want to put your little bird into the box or do you want me to? Okay, and then pause. Just give them a yeah. minute, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's not important who does it, no. um, but having having them experience some choice there. Now, would you like to hold that box for a minute before we say a few words? Or uh, You don't have to get all formal about it, but invoking that kind of choice and participation is really going to help. That kind of leads us right into our fifth tip, and that is to create some sort of a memorial for the pet, whether mm. it be a plaque, saving a tag, um, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you think would help the child remember the pet and be okay with talking about the pet you know we still talk about crystal all the time and she's been gone seven years we did know? create a memorial we too did. we have a little plaque with her picture on it and we composed some kind of poetic little rhymes that, him. <laughs> that go along with some of the things that we remember about her yeah um, you can do this fairly easily nowadays with digital media and whatnot, just to create something that gives them something that they can remember the pet by 
and acknowledge and honor the relationship that they had. You know, we go back to why would we even do this? And I think one of the most mm. important things that we, we just can't stress enough is we are all going to have to deal with mortality in this lifetime. We're going to lose someone we love, whether it be a parent, yeah. a friend, a sibling, um, a coworker. We're going to lose people in our lives. And one of the, the a great way to have kind of an introductory to Experience. dealing with those those feelings, the it, there's a lot of feelings that come up when you lose someone you love, even if it is an animal. And so mm -hmm. the, through you through dealing with losing a pet, you have that opportunity to kind of practice and introduce yourself to how you're going to handle loss. You've got this. As a conscious, positive parent, you've got this. And we've got your back. Vicki and I have put together some resources for you. If you haven't checked it out yet, please visit ParentingPowerUp.com where there are some amazing resources to help you in the most important job in the world.